Hey everyone, this is Nathan Williams with BlackCurrent79.com and I'm back here with another hand history review for you guys. So today's hand was sent to me by Christian from Austria. Uh, he is playing, this hand was played on Poker Stars 2 cent, 5 cent, regular table, not Zoom. As you guys can see there, he's got Ace King of Hearts in middle position. Important to note the stack size in this hand, Christian has a little over a double stack. However, everybody else at the table is roughly around uh, 100 big blinds, a little bit over. So this hand won't actually be uh, too deep stacked. So anyways, let's jump right into the action here. So Christian bumps it up to three times the blind, which is pretty typical and standard. Nothing really to say there. And Villain 11 makes the call out of the small blind. Villain 12 in the big blind folds. Uh, let me jump right into the stats that Christian gave me for Villain 11. All right, so Christian told me this guy is at 27, 22, 3. That is VPIP, PFR, and Aggression Factor. And essentially when I see a 27, 22, 3 kind of player like that in 6 max, I'm immediately thinking lag, loose, and aggressive. Uh, it's the kind of player who's a regular, uh, but they play a little bit more hands than the typical tight sort of nits that you find at these stakes. So you can have a little bit of a wide range there. Um, and it's important to uh, remember that as we go through this hand. Uh, as always, if you guys don't know what these stats mean, if you want to get them on your screen, uh, these are HUD stats. They're based on hands that you've already played against these players. Use a program like Poker Tracker. There'll be a link in the description below if you want to check that out. So anyways, let's go see a flop. So flop comes 996, which uh, with one heart, we got the backdoor uh, fl nut flush draw there. So reasonable hand, I mean, reasonable flop for our hand is certainly not the worst, not the best, but it's not the worst either. It's pretty hard for him to hit this board. Typically in a spot like this, you know, as a preflop razor, we, we should have the over pairs in our range. He shouldn't as the preflop caller there to the uh, the small blind. So it's, it's, it's a reasonable board for us. And if he checks to us, which he does, uh, I mean, it's just a standard C-bet situation here. Uh, which is exactly what Christian does. I like the uh, the sizing as well. I think that's uh, about half pot there. Uh, definitely does the job here. Again, it's, it's kind of one of those boards that's just hit or miss. Kind of either have a nine straight draw or you kind of have nothing. So there's really no need to bomb the pot here. I think half pot clearly uh, accomplishes what we want here. So anyways, uh, Villain 11 does make the call. We'll go to a turn. So turn's obviously really good for us with the ace there. So anyways, let's see what Villain decides to do. He decides to check. So um, so I think in a spot like this, it's kind of a little bit of a tricky situation because we need to ask ourselves, what was Villain 11 actually calling with on the flop? I mean, obviously the, the monster with the 9, 9x, maybe a straight draw with a 7-8, uh, a or possibly he could have some sort of middle parries hanging on with, like pocket 7s, pocket 8s. Uh, maybe a pocket 10s. Eh, he's probably going to re-raise pocket 10s. Probably going to re-raise a few of those hands, actually, pre-flop. But those kind of hands are potentially in his range. So kind of, I mean, obviously the ace is a great card for us on the turn. However, I expect that if we double barrel here, he's going to immediately fold his pocket 7s, pocket 8s, pocket 10s, uh, possibly pocket 10s. Um, and he's, of course, going to continue on if he does have a 9, if he does have pocket 6s or... Uh, something like that. So it's kind of, it's a little bit of a tricky spot in that I don't think that there's a ton of value to be gained from betting here. However, we need to always remember, guys, we're playing at the micro stakes here. God knows what they can show up with. God knows what they'll call with. So I'm definitely going to agree with Christian's decision here to uh, make the bet on the turn for value. Now here's the interesting point in the hand. You guys have probably been through a situation like this uh, where you get raised on the turn. As you guys know, if you've read my book, Caution to Micro Stakes, any of those 700 blog posts on my blog or watch any of my videos here on YouTube, you know what I always say, turn raises at the micros are usually the nuts, river raises are always the nuts. So honestly, guys, not really too happy about this situation here. I will say that if I was up against sort of one of the regular sort of tight, regulars that you find at these stakes that are only playing you know 18 percent of their hands and basically just sitting around set mining and waiting for aces honestly i'm just going to get away in a spot like this even with ace king a lot because i just think they're going to show up with the nuts too often it's a little bit i should say it's a little bit div more difficult with ace king ace queen ace jack are easier to get away from but i, I can still I, I can see getting away from a type player at these six specifically when they raise on the turn now this is the difficult spot of course here because we're not against that player type here we're up against a loose aggressive player a loose aggressive regular here now these players do have some bluffs in their range they do have the ability to potentially even check raise a hand like ace queen here although i do expect him to three bet that hand a lot pre-flop however i'm gonna say that overall 
at the micros, I don't think you can go wrong by folding here against pretty much all player types because the aggression levels just are a lot lower at the micros than they are at mid stakes and high stakes. You know, if you're playing a game like NL200 or something online, the regulars in those games, they, they just have a much better balanced range when they raise you on the river here. They're going to have some 7-8s. They're going to have some, even a worse ace from time to time because they, they just have more balance in their range. They do have the value hands but they also have some semi-bluffs and even some total air from time to time. Whereas typically at the micros, even with the more aggressive players like this, a loose and aggressive player, I still believe from my millions of hands of experience at these stakes here, when they raise the turn, it's still it's heavily skewed towards value in a situation like this. And what I mean by that is big value. I'm talking about two pair plus, I'm talking about trips, I'm talking about boats, stuff like that. Now, I can't blame uh, Christian for calling in a spot like this, but again, I think at the lower stakes, if you just fold to turn raises almost 100% of the time when you only have a one pair hand, Guys, I honestly don't think you can go wrong. I, I believe that their range is just too heavily skewed towards value in this situation. There's not enough bluffs. There's not enough semi-bluffs and, and error and, and, and worse value hands, like an ace-queen or an ace-jack. Anyways, with that being said, it is a difficult spot to find a fold. I can't blame you guys if you don't find a fold here every time. I certainly don't find a fold every time myself, especially against the loose and aggressive, like I said. So anyways, let's go to a river, see what happens. So pretty harmless uh, three of spades on the river there. So there's a lot of stack behind here. So we'll just kind of see what villain decides to do first. Decides to bet out uh, roughly around half pot, giving us about three to one, as you guys can see there in the pot. Now this is kind of the, now this is kind of the difficult spot here, guys, because the thing is, is kind of like when we call on the turn there, I don't really know how on earth we can fold on the river here especially versus a half pot bet because the three obviously changes nothing. Uh, I think he's either got, you know, the monster or he's got something that we beat. But once again, like I said, I just think that players at the micros, even loose aggressive players like this, their range is just have too heavily skewed towards value. Now, this doesn't mean he won't have ace queen or ace jack from time to time here, or even, a, you know, a, a seven, eight for a complete bluff. But I do think it's in the minority, and I do think that calling the turn and calling the river here um, is going to be slightly uh, a slight losing play, even against this kind of player at the micros. We'll see the results anyways. I know you guys want to see that. And as you can see there, he did have the uh, the trip nine. So hope this hand was useful for you guys. Thank you very much for sending me this hand, Christian. And I do think this is a really important hand for you guys to um, kind of think about on a deeper level in your games, because a lot of a lot of the hands, I mean, the people send me are just coolers bad beats stuff like that if you guys watch any of the videos the last couple weeks they're just cooler cooler bad beat bad beat however hands like this are much much more important for your long-term win rate because this is the kind of hand where you can make a decision on the turn there to get away and i know it's difficult we got ace king you know i think ace queen or ace jack a little bit of an easier throw away but i think the main point that i want to get away or get across in this hand guys is that you know, as I always say, turn raises at the micros are usually the nuts. And what I mean by that, like I said, is two pair or better. So as difficult it is as it is to throw away ace king on the turn here, I think that especially in these lower stakes games, 2 and L, 5 and L, 10 and L, I honestly think that if you fold these hands, a one pair hand like that on the turn to a turn raise, that's the more profitable play in the situation. Now, as I said before, that that does change as you go to higher stakes. When you're playing against players who simply are, are just playing at a higher level, they, they understand how to balance their ranges better. But that's just that doesn't happen at the micros. That's why I'm always talking about people want to play GTO and stuff, Game Theory Optimal. They want to study GTO for the micros. And that's why I'm always talking about, no, don't study GTO because you're not playing against balanced players at these stakes. This guy, when he raises a turn, yeah, he's going to have some bluffs. Let's say we run this hand 10 times or so. I believe that this player will show up with a bluff or a semi-bluff 2 out of 10, 3 out of 10 times. It's not going to be balanced like 5 out of 10. 
like you're going to find at higher stakes against those kind of players. So anyways, those are kind of my thoughts on this hand. As always, uh, number one, thank you for sending me this hand, Christian. I uh, hope that my analysis was helpful for you. Uh, for you. Uh, but as always, I don't know what you guys think as well. So let me know your thoughts on this hand in the comments below. I think this should be a really good, interesting one to uh, discuss. What do you guys do with turn raises at the micros? Do you agree with me that they're mostly skewed towards value hands like this, two pair plus, and that we can make money by throwing away an ace king, a one pair hand like this, even though even though it's top pair, top kicker on the turn? Or do you think that players, especially a loose aggressive player like this, what is your experience? Do you find that these players do have enough bluffs here where you can call down and and uh, let me know your decision on the river there as well. I do think you probably have to call on the river after you call the turn, but maybe you have another opinion on it as well. As always, if you guys enjoy watching Micro Stakes uh, Poker Strategy videos like this, make sure you give this video a like and also subscribe to my channel as I'm putting them out all the time. As always, I'm talking about the stakes here that you guys are actually playing at. Guys, you can go watch all those other poker videos on YouTube where they put $7 million in the thumbnail and it gets a million views. Yeah, nobody's going to watch my videos, but... Because I don't, there's no seven million dollars going on here at the pot's five dollars, but I'm I'm reviewing the hands, I'm I'm reviewing the stakes that you guys actually play, so it's going to help you in your game. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, stick around, I'm putting up tons more videos uh, just like this. As always, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. It's called Massive Profit at the Micros. The top link in the description below. I'll give you my complete strategy on how I beat games like this: two and L, five and L, ten and L, twenty-five and L. So thanks as always for watching, guys. It's been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com.